Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my second review on the channel. This is a review on a bait boat. Now, if you have asked me, God, a couple of years ago, would I be doing a review on a bait boat? I'd have said you were a bit of a loon, but uh, yeah, things have changed in my fishing. I'm now a bait boat user and I have been for about a year now. So I'm uh, going to review the boat I've been using. Sitting next to me here is the Acta Plus bait boat made by a company called Boatman UK. So let's crack on the review. Before we get into the kind of meat and potatoes of the review, let me just mention one thing about my kind of ethos with regards to reviews. I'm not going to do the whole spiel. If you want to see my entire kind of mindset when it comes to reviews and what I think they should all be about, uh, watch my other review, the one I did on the Bivy by Nash. I'll put a link one of the corners, I can't remember which corner it is, uh, and then you can see my entire kind of spiel about it there. But just basically the, the short and curlies of it is, from my reviews, I just want to answer one question. If I could take myself back to the purchasing decision when I was just about to you know, buy the boat, knowing what I know now after using it for an extended period of time, not a week, not two weeks, an extended period of time, would I pay the money and buy it again? Because I haven't been given this boat, it's entirely out of my own money, they don't know I'm doing this review, they haven't paid me for the review, etc, etc. So I want to answer that question. And through this whole review process, that is in my mind the whole time. All right, so my structure for this review is going to be pretty simple, just going to go through the website on my phone here and go through all the features, bring in my comments about how I feel those features are, good, bad, ugly, and then we'll bring in some kind of additions at the end, what I'd like to see improved on the boat going forward, and uh, then we'll hit some conclusions and then answer that big question at the end. Boatman UK do have various social media sites, they've definitely got a Facebook site, they do do a few videos on YouTube, and they've obviously got their main website, so if you do want to find out about latest pricing and all stuff like that, Head to one of those and I'm sure you'll find out some more info. They seem pretty active on social media, so you should be able to find out what's going on. Everything you get in the boat when you buy it, first of all, the package, really well packaged actually. I can't see it being an ever, ever being an issue with um, packaging with regards to getting damaged in transit or anything. It's quite well packaged. So you get the boat itself, you get a lid for the boat, which you can put on in the rain and it'll protect any PVA in the boat. You get a controller, you get um, a separation for the hopper, so you can make the hopper one big hopper into two small ones. You get the battery, it's a 11.1 volt, 9 amp hour battery. You get a lead, a power brick to power the uh, to charge the battery. You get a USB lead to charge the controller, and then you get a little USB kind of emergency thing that you can plug into your battery to charge your phone if you need to. That's everything you get in the boat. If I've forgotten a thing, I'll bring it up now. Did I get a tick? <laughs> So let's crack on to the website. The website address is boatmanuk.com, B-O-A-T-M-A-N.com. The size of the boat, 555 mils by 295 by 219. Decent sized boat, not too big, not too small. The material it's made out of is an ABS plastic. It's one large hopper, certainly is. It's one large hopper, but it actually divides into two if you want. What they do is included in the package, they send you this little bit of plastic, which I'll bring up on screen, and you can slot that into the middle of the hopper and separate it, separate it out into two, because the main hopper isn't just one drawer that opens, it's two drawers that open, like um, barn doors, if you will. So if you put a bit of plastic in the middle, that can separate it out into two separate hoppers. So one big hopper, or you can use it as two separate ones. Personally, I just stick to the one big hopper. Bake capacity is three kilos. I think it really depends on what you're putting in there. But yeah, they, they say around three kilos. Take that with a little pinch of salt, two to three kilos, depending on what the size of the board is you're using. Control range, 500 meters. So I'll put some info up on screen now. I physically tested it at these ranges. Now, it might go further to 500 meters, but I couldn't get in a position where I could test it to that length. But I did test it up to these ranges in these conditions. What I do as well is I'll put a link on one of the corners up on the screen now. And if you want to see the raw footage of that test, so you're not just taking my word for it, if you want to see the raw footage of those tests, press that link and that'll take you to a take you to like an unlisted video. Very raw, very unedited, but just a little bit of video I've done with my, my daughter and I, and we tested out the range of the boat the best we could. So that's up on screen now if you want it. Turning radius plus minus a meter. I think maybe even a little bit better than that, but I think the safe bet is definitely a meter. It almost turns on a dime. It's like a it's like a London taxi. It's um it's got a very very tight turning turning radius. Frequency runs off a 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency, so you shouldn't get too much interference unless you. I mean, maybe if you're on a massive like linear complex and everybody's using radio signals, you might get a little bit of a drop. I'm sure you'd be fine with 2.4 gigahertz. Sailing speed 70 m's a minute. Okay, I was thinking in my head there, would it be 70 miles a minute or 70 meters a minute? If it was 70 miles a minute, whoosh, the flash of bait boats. No, so 70 meters a minute, 
I'm sure that's fine. I'll bring up a little bit about the speed in a second. Releasing, manual manual release after you reach the destination. Yeah, so like I said, there is GPSs and things you can add onto the boat, but none of them, as far as I know, release the hopper itself. You have to release the hopper yourself, which you do on the control. I'll go through that. You've got a hook release at the back. You certainly have. Wave resistance is three to four class. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Front lamp. One piece white LED, certainly has. It's got a side amber LED, and then it's got two red flashing LEDs at the back, which flash depending on what way you're going, or flash forward and backwards. Power specification, it's got one 9,000 milliamp hour battery. Spoiler alert, awesome battery life on this, but we'll go through that in a minute. Continuous use time, 2.5 hours. Charging time, 10 hours from 9,000 milliamp hour battery. No real testing for that, but I'm sure it's not a million miles off. Usage time, four hours for the remote. Got an auto drive function to make it go forward. You certainly have, you've got like what I would call cruise control. If you hold the forward button for an extended period of time, three or four seconds, or you get this bleep and then the boat will automatically go forward and you have to still, all you have to do is steer it left or right. Two hoppers can work independently. We've talked about that. Auto pair remote, yep. Uh, quick speed and meet the needed anglers, blah, blah, blah. Easy upgrade. Yeah, so there you mentioned the easy upgrade and easy for maintenance, certainly. I can see this being a very good boat for modders if they want to, you know, work with it and build it up. Okay, so that's all the features as far as the website goes. Now let's talk about my experience with those features, what I think about them, some more information about each one, and, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? So let's just start at the top and work our way through all those bits one by one and give my thoughts. So first of all, the size of the boat. Like I mentioned, I think it's it's not too big, it's not too small, it's a, it's a very good size. I originally borrowed a friend of mine's Acta bait boat, which is a boat that's slightly shorter and has got a smaller hopper. Um, but it just had one central hopper and there was also a hopper on the back. I tried using that and I, I, it was okay and I liked the boat itself and I was very impressed with what, how much boat you got for the money. But I just wanted a slightly bigger hopper and not to carry more bait, but just to have my rigs slightly separated out inside the boat and just have a little bit more room to work with. So decent sized boat, uh, decent size that you can see at a distance. And um, yeah, overall size wise, I think they pretty much nailed it. It's made out of an ABS plastic. I'll probably, you know, I'm thinking about this an awful lot when I'm going through my review and what you've got to realise is the price of this boat. I'm reviewing this boat at the price point that it is. If I paid two grand for this boat or if I paid three grand for this boat and it was a build quality it was, I'd be up here now saying, no, it's not acceptable, it's not good enough. But that's for a three grand boat. That's for, you know, if this was an RT4, I'd be saying this is this isn't acceptable, it's build quality, but it's not an RT4. It's a 300, and I paid 350 pound for it. So I'm reviewing it against that price point. Good build quality, it's perfectly acceptable. It doesn't look like it's um, it's gonna break anytime soon. All the seals look fine on it. Um, it looked like it could take a little bit of a beating. I've definitely dragged it out of the trees a few times and it's been fine. And, um, and yeah, acceptable build quality, not setting the world alight, but certainly not bad build quality either. God, I'm getting eaten alive here by insects. Turning radius, plus minus one meter. So I think it's probably a little bit better than that. I think it's generally very good. It can turn on a dime. It's like a London taxi. Like I said earlier, you can turn it really quite almost on the spot and it will turn. If you're pressing forward and turning at the same time, you can get quite a wide arc, but I don't think you'll ever be in an issue where you're going to be aggravating people in either swim because you can't turn well enough. I don't think you're ever going to be in that position. So turning radius is perfectly acceptable for the price of boat that, you, that you're paying. Frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, like I mentioned earlier, you'll have no issues with frequency. Sailing speed. So let's talk a little bit about the speed. When I first got the boat, I was actually very, very impressed. It was awfully nippy. It, the very first time I whacked it into forward, full throttle, I was actually quite taken aback with how quick it was. I was quite surprised. Um, haven't had a massive experience with bait boats in the past, so you know that probably says something. But um, yeah, I was quite quite taken aback how quick it was. It's definitely slowed down over time, I won't lie. Um, I've used this boat an awful lot over the last year. I use it an awful lot over winter. I mapped pretty much every centimetre on my Syndicate Lake. It got some hell of a lot of use. So that's understandable. Now, I wouldn't say it's slow now, but it's. I would say it's probably dropped 25% speed. Um, I'd uh, guess I'd say it's probably dropped about 25% uh, over the year that I've been using it. It'd be nice if I could get it a little bit quicker and seeing as it is a pretty good boat to mod, I am very much considering at the moment getting some upgradable engines just to have a tinker and just to see if I can get it nipping about a little bit, a little bit quicker. But like I say, at the speed it is now, if as long as it doesn't drop too much more, then I'm perfectly, perfectly, uh, it's acceptable to me. Releasing the bait, the hopper situation. 
So like I mentioned earlier, I pretty much use it in its main configuration, which is just one big open hopper. I fish very often with helicopter rigs, kind of 90% of the time. And I, the way I fish it, I, I just spread my rig out nicely, have my bait underneath actually first, and then I, and then I spread my rig over the top of it nicely. Um, and it kind of suits my way of fishing, just fishing with it with one big hopper. You know, the hopper I would say is, is a, good, a good size and it's perfectly acceptable for, for what I need. The um, hook release, it's got a hook release at the back. I think this is a feature that could be improved. I don't use it because I worry that it's going to damage the hook or it's going to damage the hook point or at some point, at some way. I think it's a really good feature if it was just implemented slightly better. It doesn't take anything away from the boat, but it could be a really nice addition if it was just slightly, slightly better. You always have to manually release the, uh, the bait. You do that on your... Um, oh, actually, yeah, this is a good thing that we need to talk about. You do that via your remote, so you'll press, you'll press the top left button to release one hopper, you'll press the top right hand button to release the top right hopper, you'll press the centre button to release the hook release, which I just use to store my little um, bit of uh, mono that I attach to my deeper when I'm using it. And um, if you want to release both hoppers at the same time, you hold your finger down on the top left button, you hold it down for like an elongated amount of time second or two and then that drops both hoppers at the same time and to close it you do the same thing with the right hand button now there is something wrong with the boat and i'm not too sure what it is but i read up on a couple of forum posts and other people have had exactly the same issue i've had and once you know it it's not a problem but just it just know that it happens sometimes once you know about it it's fine but every now and then you'll turn on the boat and then you'll try and open the hopper and the hopper won't open You'll just get a bleep, you'll get a buzz, but nothing will happen. The boat will just stay where it, the, the hoppers will stay in place. I'm not too sure why it happens, because once you press the hopper again, it just opens straight away. For some reason, there's just seems to be some issue connected. I've tried everything. Right, editing Rob here. A very warm editing Rob. God, the weather's stifling, isn't it? I've finally got to the bottom of this. I can't believe I've had the boat for a year and it's taken to make this video to finally solve it, but I have finally solved it. I'm 99.9% .9 sure of it. It's all down to the doors being open on the boat. When you go through the startup process and the doors are open, it fails. When the doors are closed on the boat and you do that startup process, it seems to work fine every time, first time. So that's what the issue is. You just need to remember. So when you are finished using the boat, the process is when you are finished using the boat, just close the doors, turn the boat off, turn your handset off in that order, and then you're good to go. And then you shouldn't have any problems. As long as you do that, It'll always work for, well, it seems to always work first time every time after that. But if for any reason you forget to close the doors and then you just shut the boat off with the doors open, know that when you turn it back on next time, it won't open the first time. So then you need to go through the process of turning the boat on, then your handset, and then, um, sorry, turn your handset on, then your boat, and then um, just open the doors once. It will fail, but once you've gone through that process of trying to open them once, then it will work every time after that hope that that sounds more complicated than it is but it's honestly not a major major issue just get into the habit of i would carry on anyway when you first turn on the boat just when you first turn it on handset boat try and open the doors once if it opens great if it doesn't you know whatever and then just carry on after that because it always works second time whatever situation you start off the boat in so there you go finally got to the bottom of it back to the video the lamp situation or the lighting situation it has a front LED, a front white LED, and all I'll say for the LED, it's good for knowing which way the bait, the boat is facing, but that's all it's good for. It's not going to be, it's not good for illuminating a far bank or anything like that. It's just not strong enough for that. The side lights, you've got some side amber lights, so you can just tell which way it's orientated again. You've got two red LEDs, so when you're turning left, it will flash left. When you're turning right, it will flash right. When you're going forward, it will... Um, I think either blink, I'll put up on some, I'll put some B-roll up anyway, and you can see which way it goes. It flashes one way when you're going forward, and then when you're reversing, it flashes a different way. I'll tell you which, what you're doing with the controller. LEDs, acceptable, not brilliant, but acceptable, I'd say. Oh yeah, and you get the LEDs flash when you open the hopper. So when you hold your finger down on A, or you just open a single side of the hopper, you get a bleep on your handset, and you'll see your LEDs flash either side, and that, that way you know the, uh, the bait has been dropped successfully i suppose to talk about the battery life and the power spec so like i mentioned earlier the battery life spoiler alert was awesome and it 
you know, it really is. I was very, very surprised with the battery, uh, the battery life on this. I think maybe because it is a basic boat and it's just got basic LEDs, etc., etc., and it hasn't got too much to power. As it is, that battery is fine for, I would say, a week's worth of use. If you're going on a holiday, I'd be surprised if you needed to charge it for a week's holiday. If you added more stuff onto it, so like the compass additions or the GPSs and things like that, obviously that's going to sap up more power. So then I think you'd need to think about getting a second battery. But as it is, the the single battery in the configuration that i use it i charge this boat probably every four sessions and even then after four sessions i've only dropped one bit of power off the off the led indicator i think i, I did push it to the max once over winter when i was mapping out my lake and i used it oh i think for about two hour sessions and after them two hour sessions, I'd got about halfway through the power indicator and then I used it for one more session and it died at the end of the session. So it lasts for a good time. I was umming and ahhing when I first got the boat. I was thinking, do I get a spare battery or not? And they're not cheap. They're not ridiculously expensive, but they're not cheap, the batteries. So I thought what I'd do is I'll get one. I'll see how I get on with it. If I have issues with it, I'll buy a second one. Put it this way. I haven't bought a second one. I'm still just got a single battery and it's absolutely fine for what I need. The controller has, I would say, acceptable battery life. I can't really say it's brilliant and it's not bad. I, I just charge it every couple of sessions. I whack it into a little, a little one of my USB power banks, power packs, and it's fine. You know, I've never pushed it to the limit. Um, I've never needed to, it's so easy to charge. I'll just charge it every couple of sessions or when I feel like it and it's never let me down. So yeah, not a problem. So I'll put some B-roll up of the controller in a second and you can see all the buttons. You've got up, down, left, right, obviously on the main control pad. The top left hand button is for opening the left hand hopper. The top right is for opening the right hand hopper. The middle button is for opening the uh, hook release at the back. You can long press the left top left button to open both hoppers at the same time. And you can long press the top right button to close the, both hoppers at the same time. The left middle button is your. So if you hold that button down and move either left or right, you will get a bleep. Um, so if you're having problems with a boat veering one side, I'll talk about this a bit more later, but if you're having a problem with the boat veering, you can hold your finger down. So if the boat's veering to the right, hold your finger down to that button and tap it left. And every time you do once left, you're doing it one bit. So you might have to do it multiple times either way. So if it's the boat is veering off in one direction, basically you're it in the other direction. Hope that makes sense. The right middle button is the light and then hold long press the bottom button for turning on and turning off. I think we covered almost most of the boat by now. I think now is a good time to bring up probably the weakest part of the boat. And this would, I, I would say this is its biggest, I don't want to say downfall, because downfall sounds like a bit of a big word. It's not a downfall, but it's the weakest point of this boat. If I, if I, you know, if you had all the features listed of this boat, one to 10, and you were putting the best at the top, which I think would probably be battery life, the best at the top, value for money would be probably next. At the bottom, it would be steering. And it's the biggest weakness of this boat with regards to, um, yeah, with regards to the movement of it, is it's steering. It's not so bad that it that it would affect my buying decision, but it's definitely bad enough to, to warn you about. And it's definitely something that I think could be improved. You have this cruise control that I mentioned earlier. So when you hold your finger forward on the controller and hold it there for an elongated period of time, it automatically goes into cruise control mode. When it's in that cruise control point, it's very, very difficult to get the boat just going dead straight. Um, I've messed around with the yaw, like I mentioned earlier, you can press that your button and tweak left and right and I've got it going straight a little bit um, and sometimes you know if the wind is blowing in the right direction and the, and the lake's really calm you know it'll come back in a straight line for me for you know three quarters of the way and it's like oh wow but that is a that's um a variation to the rule I can't think of the word that's a that's you know that's a rarity it doesn't happen very often um but I'm fine with that. The, the good thing about the, the reason I'm fine with it is because it's easy to solve. Because the, the remote is a one-handed remote and because you're only using one hand to, to, to operate all the controls, you're holding your rod with your left hand and then you're holding the control. You're holding the control with this hand. So I'm going, when I'm putting the boat bait out, I've got the rod in this hand and I'm controlling the line and then I'm just going forward. And then once it goes into auto and then I'm, all I'm doing is just tweaking. Tweaking left, right, left, right. When it starts veering a little bit left, I start going right, 
rear okay rear in again and i'm just constantly doing that just constantly just dinking it right left and then when i get to where i want to go i pull backwards on the control that stops the boat and then i'll just do little tweaks to where i want to go and i'll drop the bait and and once you get once you've practiced it a little bit it's fine you know i've got used to it now and i'm perfectly happy with it I don't know why it does veer off. Maybe it's something to do with the motors not running at exactly the same um, speed. I think it's probably a mixture of a lot of things. I think probably the wind and the, the, the you know the wind and the environment has something to do with it. I'm sure the tow and the water and the way the, the current, but the way the you know the the waves at the top are, are moving will affect it. I'm sure it's a lot of things built into one that affects the the way that it excuse me the way that it moves and, and stops it going in that. Um, uh, straight direction but for whatever reason it is just know that if you buy this boat don't expect it to be a dart because it's not it's not going to go in a straight line the whole time you are going to have to you are going to have to mend it and then yeah that's down to you what you think is that acceptable for the price you're paying or not uh, now there are two um ex two optional uh, extras you can buy for the boat there's a gps and a compass uh, the compass um thing apparently you put it onto the boat and then every single time you go into a swim, you calibrate it. And then when you want the come, boat to come back to you, you can get it to automatically drive in a straight line back to your swim because you've set that compass position. And that apparently helps the, 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 um, you know, the, the driving straightness of the, of the boat. And uh, the, comp the GPS setting as well, when you set GPS points and it automatically goes to the GPS points, I presume it will drive straighter then because the boat will automatically adjust itself when it's going there. But... I can't comment on either of those things because I haven't used them. I would love to have the opportunity to use them and then I could come back to you at a later date and, um, and update this, uh, an update and do a part two to this video, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but yeah, I can't comment on them because I haven't used them, but they are available. So I think I've covered an awful lot there. Um, let's try and do a recap of the boat as I look at it now. As I look at it now, what can I say is the good bits about the boat? It is a nice size. It looks perfectly nice for um, for a bait boat. It's moddable, it's configurable. It looks like I'm gonna be able to update it into the, in the future with adding things onto it. The lights are okay, not set in the world of light, but the lights are okay. But again, that's something I might be able to improve in the future. I like this lid. I've used the lid a few times with the, uh, with the rain because I do use PVA bags every now and then. I like the way you can separate out the hoppers into two if you want to. I like the way you can do that or you can just use the big hopper. I fish rigs that tend to be, like I mentioned earlier, helicopter rigs about seven inches long. Uh, and that's just fine for me. That fits in nicely. Um, so yeah, rigs great. Rigs fit fine. I like the handle on the top. Don't know if I've mentioned that yet, but you get a nice little handle at the top that you can um, carry the boat and also good enough to get it out of the water. The hook release at the back is okay, but it's not fantastic. Motors are fine. Speed wise, it's okay. Like I mentioned, the speed isn't exceptional, but it's okay for the money. Battery life, awesome. Absolutely great battery life. Value for money awesome steering bit naff but all of those other things that i've mentioned just now outweigh it so yeah so i suppose now is a good time to answer that question after i've just gone through all that i think you probably know the answer didn't you but if i could go back to when i was buy, gonna buy this boat would i pay the money for it and buy it again yeah without a shadow of a doubt it is next to my electric barrow it's probably made the biggest impact in my fishing um, it's probably the one solo thing that I've bought that's made the biggest impact in my fishing. Some of you might know, some of you don't. I've got some health issues. I've had a lot of health issues over the last uh, uh, 15, 20 years. I've had 20 plus operations on my stomach, so I find it very difficult to cast sometimes. It's very painful. And I was being at a point where I was going to give up fishing. Uh, my missus took me into buying an electric barrow a long time ago, uh, and that took me through some dark times where I was, almost couldn't get to the bank. A year ago, just over a year ago, I was going through similar issues where I was really finding it difficult to consistently cast accurately and without pain. And uh, the missus says, just buy a boat. You know what it was like. You know, we went through this with a barrow. Just get yourself a boat if that, you think that will help. So I wanted to buy a boat, but I didn't want to drop RT4 money. Um, so I started using a couple of friends' boats and found that it made a big difference to my angling. So drop the money and yeah it's been um it's like i say behind the electric barrow it's the one bit of kit that i've ever bought that's made a massive impact in my fishing the the thing that i think this boat is ideal for is people like me that are just getting into the bait boat market so let's talk about who this boat is for if you are if you're new to bait boats and you've never had a bait boat before 
this is definitely the boat for you. You know, if you just want to dip your feet into the bait boat market, you're not too sure whether you're going to like it. You're worried that maybe it'll affect your fishing in a bad way. You think that maybe you'll think the fish won't um, count because you haven't casted to them. I know I did. I always thought if I use a bait boat, it's cheating, isn't it? It's not. The day I saw Terry Hearn use the bait boat, I thought, oh no, it's fine. <laughs> if the Godfather's using the bait boat, I'm fine. But yeah, I thought it was going to make my fish count less. I thought I was going to catch the fish and think, oh, it's not really, what, it's not really good for me because I didn't cast to it. Trust me, once you use it and you catch fish in it, it doesn't feel any different. So yeah, so if you're someone like that that's worried and you just want to spend a little bit of money on a bait boat and dip your, dip your toe into the bait boat water and see if you get on with it, this is definitely the boat for you. If you're struggling for cash and you want a really tight budget, obviously it goes without saying this is a boat for you. If you are a very irregular uh, angler and you go every now and then, maybe you just maybe you um, only go two, three times a year and you go on trips abroad or whatever, or um, you fish just, you know, you fish with mates or whatever for socials, but you only get out two or three times a year for whatever reason and you want to use a bait boat, obviously this is a great choice for you. There's no point spending RT money if you're only going to use it twice a year. So this is a great sort of um, idea for you then. You can you can uh, just get a boat that you use every couple of years. Anglers who fish big, big, big waters. So if you measure your water in hectares and not acres, this isn't the boat for you. If you fish lakes where you are constantly uh, fishing at 200 metres-ish plus, don't think this is a boat for you personally. If you're fishing, uh, if you want to put out kilos and kilos and kilos at a time if you want to put out a lot of bait at one time probably not the boat for you um, although it's not too bad oh and if you like perfection if you like your boat to be going in a dead straight line and you know if it was veering off every now and then and if that would get to you and you would be really annoyed by that definitely not the boat for you so I think I've covered everything I can with the boat I think I've covered everything I can with the review I hope I've covered everything if I have forgotten anything I'm going to do a part two. Um, I'm sure people out there have got questions. I'm sure people will want to know additional information that I've missed out of this review. So if you do, put it in the comments down below. Uh, let me know what um, your questions are and then I'll release a part two. Part two won't be as fancily edited or put together or, or anything like that. But I'll literally just do a part two where I sit down with you now and I'll do a question and answer session. And I'll go through all the questions anybody that's got um, anybody that's got questions I'll go through them all answer them the best I can and then um, hopefully you can make an informed decision from there I'll say I'll do that part two in a month's time as long as I've got some questions if nobody's got any questions to ask and I've covered everything then great I won't bother but if you have got some stuff that you want to add in um, that you want me to add in I will cover that in a video coming up uh, next month if you really want to buy this bait boat now but you've got a question I haven't covered it um, the absolute easiest way to contact me is through my website if you go to my website www.rpcreatives r for robert p for paul creatives.com uh, and then go to the contact section and you'll see a contact sheet there that goes straight to an email that i check constantly uh, so that's the easiest way to contact me i've also got social medias instagram facebook youtube you know you can get through to me on one of those if you want to um but links use the description use the links i put all the links to this boat the website anything else that I think will be helpful I'll put all the links in the description and uh, and then yeah we'll take it from there and I'll see you in part two so just do me one favor if this video was helpful for you if this helped you made an informed decision or if just if it entertained you for 20 minutes but if it helped you if it helped you made an informed decision and this this video was good for you I'm not going to ask for contributions I'm not going to ask you to pay me I'm not going to ask you to send me coffees or anything like that you can repay me in one very simple way. Just press the like button. That's all I ask. Just press the like button on the video. That really helps me out. And if you think this video has been good enough that it earns a subscription and you want to see uh, you know, further videos from me, that's 100% free. You'll see the little red button that says subscribe. Subscribe to me on YouTube. It's absolutely free. And that will help uh, support me and help me to um, get buying power to make more of these videos in the future. Um, if uh, you know the bigger subscriber count that I've got, the more I can go to companies and say, hey, I'd like to review your product and the, the, the better I'll be accepted. So that's, um, that's the biggest way you can support me and it would be great if you can. So once again, hope you enjoy the video. Hope you're safe, hope you're well. Keep well and uh, tight lines and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, bye.